Nuclear weapons are a gift and a curse to mankind. On the one hand, it is difficult to deny that they have reduced the number of global conflicts, but on the other hand, we cannot ignore the fact that the existence of nuclear weapons can lead to the extinction of mankind. How many of them are on the planet? What is a nuclear winter appearing in hundreds of movies and games? And is it even possible? Sit back, friends, we'll tell you all about it. And let's start with the so-called nuclear club. It's the unofficial name of a group of countries that possess warheads that are self-made. There are two categories in this club. The first is the so-called old nuclear powers. These are the states that signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 1968. There are five of them, the United States, Great Britain, France, China, and the Soviet Union. Later, the Soviet Union was replaced in the treaty by Russia. On paper, these five countries are considered to be the only legitimate possessors of nuclear weapons, or rather, they consider themselves as such. There are at least four hypothetical nuclear weapon developing states that say the conventions signed by the other countries do not apply to them. We will talk about this later, but for now, let's look at the nuclear capabilities of the United States. This country was the first country in the world to test the atomic bomb in 1945, and the only country in the world to use them in combat. There is, of course, no exact data, but it is believed that at the moment the Americans have five and a half thousand nuclear weapons. Of these, about 1,400 are active, 1,800 are mothballed but available, and 1,800 are being prepared for disposal. All of this because of the nuclear arms reduction treaties and because it takes $75 million to maintain one warhead, which is insanely expensive. And without that, a thousand warheads would be enough to turn the planet into the Stone Age, which is why they are being reduced every year. At the peak of the Cold War in the mid-1960s, the U.S. had over 30,000 nuclear weapons. The most powerful of the current warheads is the 1 and 2 megaton B-83. This is 60 times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The B-83 weighs just over a ton, and according to official data, the U.S. has about 650 of them. On the opposite side is the warhead W-76-2 with a yield of 5 kilotons. This is four times weaker than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima, but do not relax. The W-76-2 is, on the contrary, a new development, because the days of playing with muscles and czar bombs are already gone. Now stealth, the ability to dodge air defense systems and efficiency have entered the scene, and the W-76-2 is doing just fine with that. They are used on submarines, which are known to be the most hard track and dangerous weapons of a hypothetical nuclear war. The next member of the nuclear club, the USSR, whose nuclear arsenal was inherited by Russia, conducted its first tests in 1949. It also holds the absolute record for the power of an explosion. The Tsar Bomba, according to various estimates, struck with a yield of between 58 and 100 megatons, and its blast wave flew around the Earth three times. There are currently, according to official figures, around 6,000 warheads in Russia, of which 1,500 are also being reclaimed. As with the U.S., we should not romanticize the situation. Both countries are coming up with new and more effective bombs, but the situation with specific numbers of Russian weapons is a bit foggy. There are rumors about the RS-28 bomb, codenamed Satan, which is rumored to have a yield of 50 megatons, thanks to a complex warhead system. There are even rumors of a 100 megaton warhead, status 6, which, if true, amazes the imagination with its possible damage. The third member of the classic nuclear club is Great Britain. Their tests were carried out in 1952, and at the moment, it is believed that the British have just over 200 warheads. Their typical representatives are Halbrook, with a capacity of up to 100 megatons, mounted on Trident II missiles. Britain is also one of the few countries that plan to increase the number of nuclear weapons, mainly using them on submarines. It is also worth noting that almost the entire production chain of British nuclear weapons is firmly tied to the Americans, who are, in addition, the authors of the Trident II missile. The fourth in the list, and the third in terms of the number of weapons, is France. The country tested the bomb in 1960 and now has about 300 bombs and warheads. 
The classic example is the TN-75, with a capacity of 150 kilotons. Unlike the British, the French have their own missiles, and they were made not so long ago. Just last year, France announced the successful test of the M-51 missile launched from a submarine. And the last official member of the nuclear club is China. It is known about the first test in 1964, but the rest of the information is covered by mystery. It is believed that China has somewhere around 350 warheads, the most powerful of which, the DF-31, has a capacity of one megaton, which is quite serious. But in reality, there are rumors that China may have as many as thousands of bombs, and the real power of some of them is unknown to the general public. Anyway, these five countries got together in 1968 and decided that nobody but themselves could have nuclear weapons. This, of course, aroused the astonishment of the other countries, which led to the invention of their own nuclear weapons. India tested them in 1974 and 1998. According to experts, it has a current inventory of 156 warheads. Pakistan was not far behind from its neighbor and tested a weapon in 1998 with the same potential. North Korea and Israel are big on the list. The North Koreans claim to have nuclear weapons, but no one believed them. The situation in Israel is the opposite. North Korea was recognized to have nuclear weapons in 2012 and has a reserve of about 40 missiles. And Israel, according to secret services around the world, made its own atomic bomb back in the 60s. Since then, they have been testing and increasing the number of warheads. It is believed that Israel has several hundreds of them, but the country denies everything. Finally, let's mention South Africa. South Africa has developed its own weapons and for some time was a member of the nuclear club. South Africa is the only country to date to have developed and voluntarily relinquished their nuclear arsenal. As a result, we have about 13,000 nuclear weapons on the planet. Probably in reality, the number is 30% higher due to secret projects and unofficial supplies. What would happen if they were all launched at the same time? A lot of people say different things, but in short, there won't be splitting of the planet and global extinction. Considering the size of the Earth, with its volcanoes and tectonic plates, the explosion of even all nuclear weapons would be nothing, and it wouldn't be even noticeable by space standards. But what about a nuclear winter? This question is a bit more complicated. Nuclear winter is a hypothetical state of the planet after a full-scale nuclear war. It is believed that that is a result of smoke and soot from explosions being blown into the atmosphere. Darkness will cover the Earth, and the climate will experience radical changes. It is worth saying that the initial concept of nuclear winter was a purely artistic thing invented by Carl Sagan. The intentions were good, to use his name to influence the masses and convince them that nuclear weapons are bad. But with the development of media and technology, there was a need to build mathematical models and verify the theory of nuclear winter with facts. As always, humanity was divided on the subject. During the Cold War, academician Moiseyev and his American colleagues conducted two parallel studies, and the mathematics seemed to say that a nuclear winter was possible. With the power of nuclear explosions up to 100 megatons, the flux of sunlight would be reduced by 40 times. It would take six months to clear the atmosphere. In certain areas of the Earth, the temperature can drop as much as 30 degrees. The situation, as you understand, is more than just bad. There are even calculations that promised the Earth a whole year without sunshine, as it was in 1816. And in general, further studies in 2007 and 2008 only made the picture worse. There, humanity was predicted as much as 10 years of an ice age, hunger and epidemics. But there were skeptics who found very convincing arguments. For example, the Tambora volcano, which in 1815, by different estimates, hit from 150 to 800 megatons of TNT equivalent. Translated into warheads, this is more than a convincing nuclear war. And yet, despite releasing insane amounts of stuff into the atmosphere, global temperatures drop by a relatively minor 2 degrees. Of course, this is serious, and the damage to agriculture has been enormous. Well, as itself, the extinction of mankind was out of the question. Of course, it is worth mentioning that the volcano was not the same as the bombs, because during a nuclear war, in addition to the effect of the bombs themselves, 
our burnt socks and soot from anything that can burn will fly into the atmosphere. But there's a catch here too. Before the Iraq war, the very same Carl Sagan, using the same model of global nuclear war, predicted a nuclear winter because of the burning oil wells. According to him, it would have lasted a year and lowered temperatures around the world. In reality, 3 million barrels of oil and 70 million cubic meters of gas were indeed burned during the desert storm. But the effect was far from being as apocalyptic. Actually, apart from the local regions of Iraq, it was not really noticed anywhere else in the world. The reality, unfortunately, is that humanity's climate predictions are still insanely poor. This is largely because most of them are based on events in the very past, which may possibly have been misinterpreted. Therefore, many of today's calculations are already doomed to failure. To summarize, we wouldn't say that nuclear winter is not so unlikely, but at least not so critical, considering the fact that we are discussing a global nuclear war that would result in the destruction of hundreds of cities, industries, and entire countries. This effect will be much more noticeable and terrible than a drop in temperature of a couple degrees on the whole planet and any kind of so-called nuclear winter. And to be honest, I'm not sure if there's anyone who wants to check if it's true or not. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe to the channel.